in the Amazing Digital Circus, the void is actually a reference to the void that is located in Minecraft. This is the Amazing Digital Circus, and in today's video, I'll be showing you all the secret references and Easter eggs you most likely missed. So watch until the end because I guarantee you didn't see number 12 coming. So one of the references that you may have missed in this show was the little Runmo reference. Eagle-eyed viewers actually did catch onto this, but many people did miss it. Now, essentially, in the part where Zubal gets eaten by the creature at the end, Kinga asks Zubal a very important question. He says, you didn't experience a game show ending, did you? Oh, thank God you're okay. You didn't experience a game show in there, did you? Uh, I... What are you talking about? And this is in reference to something called Little Runmo. So, Little Runmo is a 2D game originating from an animated YouTube film called Little Runmo. And essentially, in this 2D film, we see this green character go through many different interesting stages. However, what happens is, after Little Runmo gets eaten, he actually experiences a game show ending. And I'm gonna show you guys what that game show ending is. <laughs> In addition, in the show, we do see Pomni, and in the start of the show, Pomni actually does throw up. Now, I do think this is a reference that eagle-eyed viewers also caught onto. This throwing up of potentially some strange material could have been a reference to the Pibby glitch. Now, if you don't know what the Pibby glitch is, the Pibby glitch is the main antagonist in Learning with Pibby. It's a mass of dark, glitchy liquid that can attach to and absorb characters, transforming into mindless, glitchy zombies, including Bun Bun, who appears to play a more prominent role than other cryptid characters. The reason that many people do think that this is the case is because of course, when Pomni throws up, she does the same emotion and same facial expression as the other Pibby characters on the Cartoon Network show. Now, at this stage of the show, when you're watching it, Pomni doesn't actually glitch just yet. But later on in the show, we can actually see the glitches happening. So, could it be that the glitches that we saw later on in the episode were actually foreshadowing what was going to occur earlier on in the episode? Because later on in the episode, there was a lot of glitching, but there wasn't much throwing up. But some people have actually done some more digging. They've said that those textures are actually the textures for Metal Mario. Although I'm yet to confirm this, and Metal Mario is a character that appears in both the Mario series and the Super Smash Bros series. He's very similar to Mario when using a metal cap, but instead of being a transformation, Metal Mario is his own character. So now, another thing, which I'm not sure how you would have caught this unless you were Russian, was a reference to Pomni's name. So there was a comment on Reddit that said Pomni is a Russian reference. It's just that in Russian, there is a word called Pomni, which translates as remember or keep in mind. I saw that someone had already posted a similar post, but I thought it would be cool to repeat. So essentially, this Reddit comment is trying to go on the significance of the name. Now, I think this is actually a really significant detail. This is because when Pomni enters the world, she doesn't actually know where she is and she is rather confused. Who are you people? Why can't I take it off? Where am I? Which is why essentially, I think that maybe given the name Pomni, it's probably going to be an Easter egg that maybe in the future, Pomni is probably going to remember where she came from and maybe figure out the riddle on how to exit the amazing digital circus. Otherwise, if not, I guess it's a really, really big coincidence. Now, one of the main characters, Regatha, actually has a very interesting secret. You see, Regatha isn't just based off any sort of design. Regatha actually has a very interesting lore to her. You see, Regatha is actually inspired by the Raggedy Ann doll. So you can see side by side that Raggedy Ann and Regatha actually look pretty similar. They both have a dress, they both have red hair, they also both have a bow tie on the top of their head. And in addition, their color complexion is exactly the same and not just the color complexion, but if you look closely, you can see that the nose of Regatha and the nose of Raggedy Ann are also the exact same shape, proving further that Regatha is of course inspired by Raggedy Ann. Now, 
What's also interesting about the original Raggedy Ann character is that she is often depicted as this scary doll which we've seen in many different horror movies, which is why Ragatha's lore might be a bit more scarier than we initially realized. So then of course we do have one of the most interesting references that I don't think anybody saw. Now in the start of the episode of the Amazing Digital Circus, Kane is actually showing Pomni around the universe. Now what's also interesting is that when he's showing her around around the universe, she essentially shows her something that is called the Void. This is the Void! We don't venture out into the Void. Not even I know what's out there. Now, the Void is an area in which he describes as somewhere that not even he knows what goes on. And this place is literally nothing. There is apparently nothing in the Void. Now, doesn't that seem very familiar to another game which has the Void too? Of course, in Minecraft, Minecraft also has a Void. And the Void is the name given to the empty space external to the world in any dimension, most commonly below it. In vanilla Minecraft, it can only be entered using a command or the map editor or the creative or spectator mode, using glitches or by reaching the end. So we know that the void is something that exists in Minecraft. And of course, it exists as well in the amazing digital circus. I think it probably is a very neat reference, although the only thing is the color scheme is a little bit different. We have to understand that also the void was so bad that Kane actually realized that Pomni was in there and he left whatever he was doing and managed to bring her right back. Oh no, someone's venturing out into the void. They'll get totally spoiled. Although the void does seem like some kind of heaven area because these characters are floating and it is white. So we aren't sure if this is very similar to the Minecraft one, but we know that they do have the same name. In addition, when Kane is roaming around the initial universe and we're trying to figure out where we are, we do see two quick characters. These characters are the sun and the moon. We are told that this is just the day and the night, but of course, I do think that this is a reference to another video game. In Five Nights at Freddy's, the daycare assistant is a sun slash moon headed animatronic, consisting of two personalities that share the same vessel. Debuting in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, they later reappear in the Security Breach's Ruined DLC, gaining a third personality who's referred to as Eclipse. So essentially, we have Sundrop and we do have Moondrop, and these two characters are pretty crazy. And what's also interesting was that Kane actually says, let's get out of there before these characters do get crazy. And we do know that when Sun does turn into Moon, he does in fact get pretty insane and you do need to be very careful to make sure you get away from him. So that could have been a secret reference, although it isn't confirmed anywhere. I think it's worth a shot. If we actually take a look at one of the images on Corfmo's wall, albeit very scary, we can see that this image actually looks pretty similar to the main protagonist of the game, Joyville. Now, Joyville is a horror puzzle adventure game set in an abandoned children's camp. In the game, the player takes on the role of of a child who returns to Joyville years after it closed down to unravel the mysteries of its past. The player must solve riddles, explore the camp's eerie grounds, and confront malevolent entities in order to survive. Now, Joyville is a dark and atmospheric game with a unique blend of horror and humor. But on the image that we do see in Kofmo's room, it's pretty evident that this is the character. Now, I didn't play Joyville, but I do know that the yellow things that we're seeing at the bottom are very similar to what we do see in Joyville. Now, one of the characters actually has interesting lore, which hasn't been touched up upon by anyone. So we have the character called Gangle, and Gangle actually has something unfortunate happen to them in the very beginning of the episode. We can see that Jax is walking by Gangle when she's on the floor crying. Now you might be wondering, why is Gangle actually crying? So Gangle is actually made of theatrical or comedy and tragedy masks, simply called theatrical masks. So these are two masks side by side, one smiling and the other crying or frowning. 
These are the most iconic symbols of theater and represent the two main genres of ancient Greek theater. So the thing is, when Gangle's mask was broken initially or by Jax, essentially this character now only has the emotion that is the crying one. You see, if her mask wasn't broken, then she would have access to both emotions. Hence the reason for the entirety of the rest of the episode, we see Gangle actually crying. So now, one of the things that we did actually get to see in the episode, which was the biggest easter egg by far, was the wackywatch.com. Now, most of you may have seen this and you may have thought that this was just an actual joke. But if you do go on Google and you type in the wackywatch.com, you are actually greeted with a link that plays you a secret video. Now, I'm going to show you guys this secret video because it is really, really interesting and it's made by the same team. Now, after watching the Wacky Watch, okay, I think that there is a deeper reference that many people did miss. Of course, it's absolutely amazing that we got this really cool website. But one thing that I think people did miss was that this game was very similar or referencing Amanda the Adventurer. The reason I say that is because in Amanda the Adventurer, the game possesses the same creepy 90s, 80s style feel. And the reason I also do think that this is very similar is because Amanda the Adventurer's initial environment that we see in this screenshot is very similar to what we see in the amazing digital circus at the start. So at the start, you can see that the outside of it looks very blocky and it looks very similar to Amanda the Adventurer's area that she had with Wooly. Now, one of the most interesting characters, Jax, actually also has some very interesting lore. You see, Jax is the tall and lean character resembling a light purple rabbit. However, some comments have actually pointed out that Jax looks like a smiling cat clock. Now, if you Google smiling cat clock, you'll initially see a black and white cat clock, which doesn't really seem that similar to Jax. But if you scroll down a bit, eventually you get to see what seems to be some kind of purple and yellow cat, which seems quite similar to Jax's face. Now, this one isn't that strong of a reference. It might not even be a reference, but it does look pretty similar. Similar enough for me to warrant it in this video. In addition, in one of the last scenes in the Amazing Digital Circus, what we do see is we see them having a mighty banquet or a digital feast. The thing is, this is a reference to the Last Supper. And essentially, it's a really, really big piece of culture that many TV shows and many animated shows have referenced in the past. You can see that in the Last Supper picture, there's the same white long table with everyone sitting on the side of it. Then, of course, we have one of the biggest references in the actual show. So in the amazing digital circus, we see the main character Pomni finally find the exit that she's been looking for. Unfortunately, when she opens the door to the exit, what we see is a room that seems to be some kind of office building. Now, essentially what happens as she continually uses and goes through the offices, we can see that she's led back to the exact same place. And this is exactly the kind of thing that happens in the video game, The Stanley Parable. So The Stanley Parable is essentially a game that's pretty confusing, but it's also quite interesting. Now you can see that pictures from The Stanley Parable game looks pretty much identical to what we see in the amazing digital circus when the character Pomni tries to escape. In addition, there is also another Stanley Parable secret that many people did miss. In the video game, Stanley Parable, the character actually says, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. Been on the tip of his tongue, he just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. And then later on, we see the same thing from Pomni. <laughs> oh, okay, now I get it. This is a dream, and I should just play along until I wake up, right? Whatever you say, kid. Now, another secret Easter egg that I think many people didn't realize, but I'm sure that this was inspired by, was the character who's actually related to Kane. The character called Bubble is, is actually a character that resembles a character from the Mario universe. 
and this character is Chain Chomp. So essentially, Chain Chomps are spherical creatures that take the role of dogs in the Mario universe. In Mario games, they're often chained to poles and pretty much invincible. And you can see that the character Bubble is actually pretty much based off this Chain Chomp character. Another reference that someone actually managed to find on Reddit was the fact that one of the characters could be very referencing another character and the character we're talking about is the gloinks queen so the gloinks queen is essentially the kind of big boss that you see at the end but it also does get destroyed by the glitched version of kofmo however if we take a look at the beetlejuice sandworms we can see that this may have actually inspired the Glonks Queen's creation. Although this isn't officially confirmed, it definitely does seem like this is plausible. 